Welcome to Techie Cast Jacks, where the top technology and business experts around discuss the latest trends in high tech. This podcast is hosted by Joe Holbrook, who's an experienced technologist pundit in Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome to TechieCast Jacks. I'm Joe Holbrook. I'll be your host today. Today we'll be talking about a subject that I get routinely asked quite a bit about, especially for folks that are either new to IT or have been in different areas of IT, such as help desk or perhaps even desktop repair, other areas like that. Generally, it is going to be focused on what we really need to do to start becoming a cloud engineer. I'm going to go ahead and I'll talk about different facets of what we need to become a cloud engineer. But basically, if you are interested in a new career, such as becoming a cloud computing expert, a great way to start is to become a cloud engineer. Now, with that said, cloud engineers are going to typically have job functions that are going to be focused mainly around, of course, a specific cloud or different types of clouds. It could be just an AWS cloud or it could be AWS Azure, Rackspace, and a whole bunch of different facets of responsibility from a platform perspective. And then we'll get into, of course, talking about one of the things about becoming a cloud engineer is to understand that this is an area that is not just about the cloud. There's gonna be some areas typically around programming. You wanna know some of the areas that are pretty in demand to, to really have some kind of basic skills around is going to be around, for example, Golang or JavaScript, for example. Those are pretty much the more common ones that I would run into. Skills around is going to be around, for example, Golang or JavaScript, for example. Those are pretty much the more common ones that I would run into. Now, when you're a cloud professional, you'll typically want to build, maintain, uh, link up, even deploy and understand to a degree how to architect cloud services. Generally, the main cloud platforms you're going to run into will be mainly AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Now, there's some other cloud platforms out there, such as Alibaba, Oracle Cloud. Those are really small niche areas. Most of the work is going to be on the big three. And in reality, When you look at LinkedIn and job postings, over half the work or even 60% on some of the job boards is really focused just on AWS. So with that said, why is there such a demand for cloud engineers right now? That's a really good question. It comes down to a multitude of factors. First is cloud engineers are in demand because of the fact that companies are starting to realize they do not want to manage on-prem IT for any number of reasons or invest for that matter in on-prem IT. CapEx is becoming quite challenging to obtain in a lot of organizations. And when I say CapEx, what I mean is capital expenditures. This is a procurement exercise. For example, if you're a large company, getting $2 million is not a big deal. However, if you're a mid-sized company, that may not be something you can do. So what do you do? Your option is to go to the cloud. When we go to the cloud, we're going to need folks that are able to deploy, manage, and link up our cloud services to on-prem services and be able to maintain it day to day. Because of that, that's one of the main reasons companies are going to the cloud. Another reason could be that they want to get to market quicker. Even if they had the money, it could take them weeks or months to even get this equipment they need where they could just go straight to the cloud. And this is really true in niche areas such as machine learning or big data services and even areas such as requiring uh, advanced capabilities around networking, et cetera. So because of that, cloud is also picking up. 
another reason the cloud is picking up is it is generally considered more of an OPEX expense in most cases. And because of that, companies can write off these expenses in the same year, whereas if it's CapEx, it has to be typically amortized over a period of 7 to 15 years, typically 14. It depends on you know the company uh, tax structure and all that, but generally that's about what you would see. Also, one of the secrets of why companies are going to the cloud is because in reality, they can hire someone for a cheaper rate and also lower skill sets. This is really what is going on as well. Now, instead of going and getting that Cisco administrator for 220K, they could get someone for 120, 120K, they could get someone for 120K to do the same work and also save the money on the infrastructure. So this is something to that is, is really going on, but not a lot of people will want to talk about it. Now, when it comes to also understanding other areas that companies are going to the cloud, it could also be real estate expenses. One of the things that we're witnessing now with the COVID uh, event is that uh, people are not going into work like they used to. They're not going to school like they used to. They're staying at home more and more. And companies are seeing opportunities to reduce office space, and that gives them another reason to possibly reduce data center space. And these are just some of the things that are really going on in the industry. Now, when it comes down to some examples, uh, for, for one example specifically, Indeed does a really good job at highlighting the demand around cloud engineers cloud architects, et cetera. For example, between like 2015 and 2018, according to Indeed, these roles rose literally 100 plus percent, 108 percent to even 170 percent in some areas. Now, searches for cloud engineers, for example, have risen up to 141 percent in the last two years. This is according to an Indeed report. Now, what exactly does this cloud engineer do? Well, that's a really good question. The reality is, is there's not really one size fits all. There's not really one job description that fits all. But basically, we're connected to the cloud. It comes down to managing the applications, the databases, the, the logins, the integrations, maintaining accounts, et cetera. Maybe migrating as well is, is typically part of that. Now, what exactly does a cloud engineer really need around skill sets? Well, a lot of it comes down to understanding, of course, how to migrate, understanding how to secure data, understanding best practices of the vendor. So these are just some of the very basic things to consider. Now, cloud engineers can get to this sort of job uh, or career, however you want to look at it, in several areas. You could basically jump into a role after taking a cloud bootcamp. You can be working in IT in another role and then just basically stumble into it in your company. This is something that happened quite a bit in a lot of larger organizations where companies decided, okay, well, we're not going to need as many VM administrators, but we're going to need someone that's going to do cloud. And that's something that is pretty common to see. Another thing that can happen as well is a lot of developers can become cloud engineers as well. It's a nice, easy lifestyle with a lot less stress typically for developers and also data engineers as well in a lot of cases. So these are just some of the things. Generally, another thing to consider as well is there's going to be some programming languages, some software development expertise needed to a degree. So if you're a developer, this is a real role to run into typically. Some of the areas that we see quite a bit around right now is absolutely going to be around Java and Golang. Python is widely used. Uh, Hadoop is a big area. Kafka, Redshift, you name it. Now, some other areas like containers, uh, for example, and container management. Docker is huge. 
Kubernetes. Uh, these are just some of the areas you'll run into. When it comes to cybersecurity, this is another area that cloud engineers will absolutely need to know as well. For example, how to mitigate security issues, how to use the tools that are provided in the cloud platform. Another th question that I want to add to this that comes into play is what is the typical salary of a cloud engineer? Now, the reports are pretty much all over the map, uh, but Indeed has numbers at 96,000 as an average. LinkedIn, I saw a figure around uh, basically 120. Glassdoor had a number like 118 and change. Uh, and again, every job site is going to have a different number. But I will say if you look at, for example, a lot of the certification surveys that come out, like from Global Knowledge is a good example, they typically almost always have AWS professionals in there, Google Cloud, Azure professionals, as some of the highest paid professionals in, in the uh, cloud industry. So that's another thing to really consider. Now, there was a couple reports. One was from Gartner, I believe it was. It's from Gartner, I believe it was. Yeah, G-A-R-T-N-E-R, -E Gartner, I believe, <laughs> um, is just one of the industry analysts that had reported like some of the top areas for cloud professionals. Washington, D.C., oddly enough, came up as number one. And that's because the government uh, is just getting into the cloud from a perspective of the commercial sector. So we're seeing a ton of demand in D.C. Another area is San Francisco, Bay Area, New York, San Jose, as you would expect, Chicago. These are some of the top areas. This was according to, I believe, Gartner Talent Network or some – name from it's it's a subsidiary i believe of gartner talent new run i believe is actually what it was called so there's just so many good resources out there so my recommendation before i wrap up the uh, podcast is if you want to get into the cloud you really need to just start taking some of the on-demand courses tech commanders has some free ones available as well as some paid courses You'll get your certificates you could print out as well. This will help you, uh, especially when you're starting to apply for work, you know, to prove some kind of education in the cloud, especially if you didn't go to school. And, and the reality is, is that there isn't a lot of schools teaching just cloud. Uh, and if they are, they're very expensive programs or boot camps. And it's not like you go to um, – get a bachelor's for cloud, it's usually everything else that was, you know, from 20 years ago that you learn about. So it's really important to realize that even if you don't get that IT degree, it's total nonsense when it comes to the cloud. It's just not needed. Also, too, there's a reason why Google and Facebook and a lot of the other tech companies are not requiring degrees. It's because they know that it's just not providing value and it doesn't actually serve their purposes from an employee perspective. So because of that, if you don't have a degree, it doesn't matter in most cases. Now, of course, there's some areas of the industry that want you to have a degree. That's going to be your big five accounting firms, for example, like Accenture, Deloitte or whatever. Sure, they're going to always want to see that degree. But in reality, in most real world jobs where you're not just a consultant flying on a plane every week, uh, you don't need that degree. Just go out, get a cloud boot camp, get that training online. If you could a attend a course somewhere, that's even better. But there's plenty of exercises available on Tech Commanders. There's great cloud boot camps as well from different companies such as quickstart.com and then also too from other vendors such as I think Simply Learn has a good one that they collaborate with uh, a couple universities as well. But with that said, check out techcommanders.com. I'll have a list of the top cloud boot camps as well.